So we read before the prayer in 1 Corinthians chapter number three. If you would lay a bookmark here, and I wanna, I wanna go back and just revisit what we read between verses uh, 10 and, and all the way down to verse number 15. Now, if you would put a bookmark here, because this is something we're gonna be referring back to in the coming weeks, because this is leading us into something that is gonna be heavy, it's gonna be weighty, I'm excited about, and, 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 and how God has ordained every believer's life to be built on the foundation of Jesus Christ and I want us to just dive in the word and say, okay, what does that look like? Uh, not long ago, I was reading a, a book by Ken Ham. I love his teaching. And he made this statement that you can't build a house from the roof down or you don't build a house from the roof down. And it just resonated in me. I was like, man, that's so simple, but yet it's so powerful. We live in a world where so many people want to see our, you know, we want to show off our rooftop. You know, the roof is the part that's easy to see driving through a neighborhood, easy to see somebody's roof. And I feel like with social media, we just put what we want everybody to see out there. We just put it all out there. We, we put what, what they, we want people to think about us. That's what we post. That's what we put. But that doesn't necessarily reflect the foundation because the foundation is not always seen. As a matter of fact, I submit you probably haven't even noticed or maybe you have, uh, likely, you know, uh, unlikely, the foundation of your house. When you read the Gospels, you, you see the teachings and the miracles of Jesus, and those are awesome. And you say, man, look at the Savior. I want to be like him. But how many times do we just skim right over the times that he's away in the mountain in prayer and privately seeking the will of his Father and the power of his Father? No, we love the stuff that's seen publicly, and we overlook the things that were done privately. And I feel like we all need to get to this place where we search our hearts and judge ourselves and say, okay, what is the foundation of my life? Where am I building from? What is the place that I am building from? Now, let me set in context what 1 Corinthians 3 is talking about because this is some stuff right here we're going to be unpacking over the next couple of weeks. First of all, Paul is talking to the church of Corinth about how he brought them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that was the foundation. And that as ministry and church grows, there would be others that would build upon that foundation of Jesus, but he's saying, hey, take heed to what is built on this foundation. And to be transparent and honest with you, one of the concerns that I have about Word of God as it grows is that we never deviate from the original foundation of preaching Jesus as the manifested Word of God, of reaching more people in more places in more ways and not discriminating and loving everybody in society and being a church that would welcome and embrace every person that walks in it so that when you walked in, you wouldn't see a white church or a black church. You would just see a church of people unified under the banner of Jesus. Christ, and I would hate if I went home to be with the Lord and someone else stepped in and built something other than what the Lord has called me to do these years. And so when you think about what Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, he's saying, okay, Jesus is the foundation. Now take heed what you build on this foundation, church. Make sure that it is always all about, say it, Jesus. Let him be your starting point. Let him be your starting point. And so one thing that we're going to be covering in this series is how to make Jesus the starting point of my life, how to make him the foundation of my individual life, how to make him the foundation of our church, how to make him the foundation of our homes, and there's so much that we're going to be dealing with in this series. Now, watch this if you would. Let's come down to verse number 11 again. He says, for other foundation can no man lay that, that, than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Um, now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Now, there's six things that he's talking about building on the foundation. Three are good and three are not so good, right? My wife, you know, she loves goats and she raises goats and she's got eight goats pregnant right now. Bye. And so yesterday, she asked me to get the boys to go into what we call the maternity ward and to change out the shavings and to keep it and get it all clean where the goats are going to hopefully have their babies because you really can't tell the goat where to go. I've seen them have them out in the yard. And so, but 
The, the shavings are the pine shavings, the clippings, you know. The, it's not a lot of value in that. That's what we put in the bottom of a barn or what we put in a, in a, in a, in a dog kennel. Thank you, my brother. But, but So when we look at these six things listed about what we can build on the foundation, three are gold, silver, precious stone. The other's wood, hay, stubble that you would throw in a barn. Three are valuable. Three will endure. Three are precious. Three will last. Three of these won't. And so you have to think about in your own life since you accepted Christ as your Savior or if Jesus is your Savior, what have you been building on that foundation? Because we see it clearly here in verse number 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, read that out loud again. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, which means if Jesus is the foundation of my life, then he's my starting point. That's where I'm building from. That's my foundation. That's where I'm building from. But what am I actually building? Because I want to submit unto you that, that there are many of us that are likely guilty of having injected Jesus in on the fourth or fifth floor of our life. In other words, we already had our life just like we wanted it, and we tried to add in Jesus. None of y'all, that was, they were at the 945 service, all right? But, 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 I'm just kidding. But, but there, there are individuals, and perhaps we're guilty, where I'm just going to inject some Jesus in my life because I believe the Lord is good, and, and yes, you know, I know how to go to church and, and, and pray, and someone injects some Jesus in there, but he's coming in at the fourth, fifth, sixth floor. He's not the foundation. He's not the starting point. He's just in there somewhere. And then what we've made the foundation, what was actually at the base of our life, our starting point, when that began to collapse, guess who we blame? We blame God. I started going to church, and look what happened. Going to church is not going to change your life, especially if you're not applying what you got at church, and if you're not in a church where you can actually get something. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. And so, is Jesus the starting point? Is he the foundation and Am I building from there? That, 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 that's the question. Is that the place that I am building from? Because he says here in verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation, and when we stand before God, when we stand before the Lord, and Lord willing, we'll talk about that in this series. When we stand before the Lord, these six things will represent what we built. We will either have on our foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, stubble, or all the above. And I think that it's going to be some all the above. And notice in verse 13, he says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, or that judgment day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, gold, silver, and precious stones are not flammable, but wood, hay, and stubble, and stubble are. So if you stand before the Lord and I see a bonfire, <laughs> I say, man, what were they doing in their life? Right? Matter of fact, I, I, I am of the opinion, I can't prove this biblically, but I am of the opinion that the stones that we get to lay before Jesus' feet when we honor him in heaven, I believe they are the ones that represent what we did for him on earth. In other words, the gold, the silver, and the precious stones, they represent what we built on earth for the Lord. And I believe that's what we have to give over to the Lord when the Bible says that we will cast our, our crowns and our, 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 you know, our reward before him I, I believe that that is the reward that I can give to the Lord what he enabled me to do in the earth. And thanks be for the grace of God that that wood, hay, and stubble that I put in my life is going to go up in smoke. Th thank you, Lord. I mean, I, thank you that it's going to be burned because watch this. He says in verse 14, if any man's work abide, it remains after the fire, which he hath built thereupon. He shall receive a reward. Now, that's not salvation. That's not being born again. That's a reward. Jesus is your salvation, and Jesus is the foundation. The reward is for what you built on top of that. Verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, wood, hay, and stubble, he shall suffer loss. But look at the gospel of God. But he himself, read it, shall be saved 
yet so as by fire. What do you mean? How is that guy still saved? Because his works were not the foundation of his salvation. Jesus was the foundation of his salvation. My being in church today is not what makes me saved. It's my adding to the gold, the silver, and the precious stone. Me living for him is what I'm putting on the foundation. Jesus is the foundation, and there is no eternal life outside of Jesus Christ if you believe the word of God. Amen. But if when I stand before the Lord and there's a representation of gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble that reflects what I actually built in the earth, think about how real that is for us today. Are we putting things on the foundation of Jesus that are not going to last? Or are we building things that will endure that represent gold, silver, precious stones? These are meaningful. These are precious. They are costly. I've made an investment. I've been intentional. This is what I am building uh, on my foundation of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, let's do this. If you would, turn back with me to the Gospel of Luke, and I want to go to the sixth chapter, Luke chapter 6. So, in society, in community, in your home, or in any relationship, you cannot find agreement. You cannot find conclusion when we don't have the same starting place. See, if you came to me today and you said, I don't believe the Old Testament. I only believe the New Testament. Then you and I wouldn't be able to find harmony and agreement because we don't have the same starting place. Because I'm a believer in the canon of God's word. I believe in all 66 books. I, I believe that, 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 that the, the canon and counsel of God starts in Genesis 1-1, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's my starting place. My starting place is not evolution. My starting place is not some decision that the Supreme Court made in recent history. My starting place is not where we are as a society. My starting place is the word of the living God. That's where I'm building from. How I view man is based on what God has said about man. How I view marriage is based on what God has said about marriage. How I view government is based on what I've read in God's word and why he implemented government. In other words, my starting place is the word of God. And if your starting place is not the word of God, we're not going to agree. Does that make sense? So when you talk about building from a foundation, you're talking about building from a starting place. Imagine buying land and building a home. If you bought some land, you got to decide, where do we want to build? Where do we want to put the foundation? Where do we want our house to be? How much backyard? How much front yard? Where do we want to be in relationship to this property? And so it's a decision of where that foundation is laid, and then you build from there. We've got to get to a point where we're building our life from Jesus up, not sticking him in some third, fourth, fifth floor of mess we've already built. No, Lord, I'm going to make you the foundation of my life, not an additive to my life. Now watch this in Luke 6. Church is so real, even before I read this, because I really want to kind of just give an overview of where this series is going. Everything is built on some type of foundation. And that starting place is determining so much other. Let's say you're dating right now and you, you know, you, you found somebody you think you're gonna marry. Or you want to marry. And I say to you, uh, hey, you know, I, I mean, what, what, what's going on? Oh, man, I've never been so happy. Pastor, I tell you, I've never been so happy. Ooh, I've never been so happy. She makes me happy. I got to marry this girl. I've never been so happy. And then I say back to you, now, wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute, not so fast. You do know that happiness is based on what's happening. And it won't always be happening in marriage. But if happiness is the foundation, then as soon as you are unhappy, then you say, now this must not, must not have been meant to be. I'm not happily married. I'm not happy in this relationship. It's time for me to break up. It's time for me to go. I'm not happy. Why? Because you've made happiness the foundation. 
We inject stuff that should not be foundational in life, in marriage. We've injected it in church. I had a member leave this many years ago. I had a member leave this church over the color of the carpet. Jesus did not say, and upon this rock I will build my church and lay carpet. No, 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 no. When you start making church about the color of the rug, you have missed the point. And we make church, and we, we, you know, you have folks leave a church because a visitor sat in your seat. Don't nobody have no seat? If you get to sit in the same seat, we can, we can praise the Lord, but if a visitor sat in the seat, then let, hey, welcome to the Word of God. So glad you're here today. Amen? But nobody, none of y'all would ever do that, would you? No, you wouldn't do that. Especially when you come to a different service, and you've been coming to 8, and all of a sudden you decide to come to 1130, and somebody's in that seat, and they're like, hey, this is my 1130 seat. I don't want you better to go back to 8. We don't roll like that at 1130. It's my seat at 1130. And, and the Jones family got it at 945. You need to check the records. <laughs> we, we make church about stuff that's not even biblically based. We, 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 make, we, we make decisions that aren't foundational stuff. We, we're, we're building a life off of wood, hay, and stubble when we need to be building it off of things that endure and things that matter and things that are truthful and things that are based on the Word of God. And that's true in our life. That's true in our relationships. You know, for me, when, 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 when I met Chrissy, I had already heard about Chrissy. I had a cousin who was real good friends with her best friend, and I was hearing Chrissy this and Chrissy that. Oh, this girl loves God. Oh, this girl has great conviction. Oh, she has strong standards. Oh, y'all are so much alike. Oh, you got to meet Chrissy. And I've been hearing about Chrissy, you know, you know, she loves Jesus. I'm like, okay, you know, I wait, wait, let's see the girl. And I saw the girl, hey, <laughs> loves Jesus and looks good too. <laughs> Woo! 21 years later, that girl still spins my head like it's on a swivel, and I'm so grateful that Jesus is the foundation of her life, not me. Why? Because I have let her down, and I'm not always operating at full potential. Sometimes my batteries get low, and sometimes my wires get crossed, but I thank God that I'm not the foundation of her life. Jesus is the foundation of her life. I'm on the second layer. I'm on the second layer, which means if I default, she's got a foundation in Jesus. My foundation is not Chrissy. My foundation is Jesus Christ. That's why I don't believe this stuff about, oh, I'm just a half looking for my other half so I can be a whole. You don't need to be a half looking for a half. You're too messed up, incomplete folk. Colossians 1.16 says, I am complete in him. One will put a 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. We need two whole, complete people, mentally, physically, and spiritually whole and complete, coming together. Now, that relationship will work. Yes and amen. See, if Jesus is not the foundation... Nothing else is going to last. Nothing else is going to endure. My marriage to Chrissy can't be based on happiness because there's going to be days she or I or both are going to be unhappy. Then what do we do? No, the foundation of that marriage has got to be based on God's word, that God's called two people to come together and be fruitful and multiply and to raise a righteous seed. Marriage wasn't designed to make you happy no way. Marriage was designed to make you Holy. Some of y'all would still be in the street if you had not got married. Some of you don't tell them where you'd be right now had you not got married. Getting married shaped you up. Getting married made you commit. Getting married matured you and developed you. Yes, it did. And you needed that woman in your life. Or you needed that man in your life. That, 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 that you were better. Two are better than one. Something happened as a result of that relationship that would not happen had you remained single. Now, some folk got the gift to be single. Help yourself. Back to the word. Luke 6. <laughs> True. The Bible says so. Now watch this in Luke chapter 6. Verse number 46. When you get there, say amen. Why, Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? 
You call me Lord, but you don't do anything I say. You call me Lord, which means owner, master, but yet you don't even do what I say. Whosoever cometh to me. There's three words I want you to underline in this verse. The first one is cometh. Whosoever cometh to me. You got to come to Jesus. It's your decision to accept Jesus or not. Whosoever cometh to me. And heareth my sayings. The second word I want you to underline or circle is heareth. Whosoever cometh to me, number two, and heareth my sayings. You got to hear his word. Amen. We need to hear the word of God. But we can't just hear it. Watch the third one. And doeth them. Underline, circle, do something with that word doeth. Cometh, heareth, doeth. That's King James. It's okay. Comes, he hears, and he does. Cometh, heareth, doeth. He's doing what he heard. If anybody asks you what kind of church is Word of God Ministries, you tell them we are a doodle book church. You say, how you spell doodle book? D-O-D-A-B-O-O-K, hashtag that, doodle book. Because that's what we're supposed to be, our doodle book people of God. What does the Word say? That's what I do, doodle book. Jesus said, when you come to me, hear from me, do what I tell you to do, and then I'm going to show you what this man is like. So what is the person like that comes to Jesus, hears his word, and does his word? What are they like? Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, could not shake it. See, getting saved doesn't mean you won't have problems. Living for God doesn't mean you won't have problems. It just means that you might have trouble, but trouble doesn't have you. You might have problems, but problems don't have you. In other words, you're not absorbed by them. You, 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 you're still unmovable. You're still always abounding in the work of the Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Why? Because you are established on a rock that has caused you to become unmovable. You are set in cement. You are planted like Psalms 1 speaks of. You're yielding fruit because you have been planted. You're unmovable and always abounding. It doesn't mean you don't have problems, but they're not moving you. You ever, you ever had, you ever, knew, you know, known someone that was in a relationship and, and maybe, you know, dating or whatever, and, 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 they, and someone left them. And then you over here, you know, well, you know, she left him. Yep, she left him. I don't know what he's going to, I mean, we better keep our eyes on him because I'm telling you right now, that, that girl right there was the apple of his eye. His world revolved around her. I don't think he's going to make it. I don't know. She was his everything. And then you, you come back a month later and the man doing fine. He says, man, I would, I would have thought by now you'd have been done collapsed and gave up, caved in and quit. But no, that relationship was built on a greater foundation. And when that first four collapsed, he was still established on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And that's true for any man or woman of God that gets planted. You can endure loss and other people will look at you and think, man, that job was everything. He lost that job. What's he going to do? Oh, he lost that career. What's he going to do? Oh, his, oh, you know, his loved one passed away. What's he going to do? Believe it or not, folk were saying this about me when my mama died. There were people that literally wondered if I would stay in ministry after my mom died because I loved my mom so much they thought that would wreck me. I stood in faith that God would heal her and she went to be with the Lord and there were folk that wondered if I would stay in ministry. Listen, my rock, yes, was my mother but what made my mother my rock was Jesus and there is something deep in my life that goes deeper than any relationship even that of my mama. If we built our life from Jesus, if we built our life from the word of God, if we made that the starting point, Church, I'm telling you, everything else would change. Watch this. Verse 49. But he that heareth, but he that heareth and doeth not. Now notice in verse 49, but he that heareth and doeth not. 
Remember them three words I asked you to underline in verse 47? Can you go back and look at them real quick? Cometh, heareth, and doeth. That's King James, 1611. Okay. Who comes, hears, and does. Notice in verse 49, he did the second, but he that heareth. But notice what happened behind that, and doeth not. In other words, he didn't do the third one. So I, I, I'm, I'm to assume here that he came to Jesus. I'm to assume here that he heard the word, but I'm, it's clearly the third one, he wasn't a doer. Do you realize knowledge can puff up the mind? The Bible tells us so, that knowledge puffeth up. In other words, it makes arrogant. And there are some people that just want to learn the word of God, not because they want to live by it. They just want to have it in their head so they can always know everything. But you ain't never met nobody like that. They got to say what the preacher going to say before the preacher says it. Let everybody know in their vicinity that I know what he's going to say before you do. <laughs> they got to quote the verse before you actually turn to it so let everybody know, hey, I know that verse. Yes, I'm spiritual. Yes, yes, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the spirit. You irritate people around you. Stop doing that. <laughs> Give the hand clap. This is what you've been waiting on. You've been waiting on me to correct that. There it went. Notice that you can hear and not do. Let me tell you why. Because knowledge can be deceptive. And let me explain what I mean by that. I, I feel like we all have the tendency, I know I do, of thinking we have something because we know it. In other words, once it goes into our knowledge bank, we feel like we now have it. But just because you know it doesn't mean you have it. And that's why when you go to a person that you feel like could use some advice or they're struggling and they've come to you and you try to give them a word of encouragement or counsel and then they say back to you, well, I, I know I know that. Well, then tell me then. I didn't know you knew that by the way you were living. <laughs> Had I seen that in your life, I would not have forwarded you that information. Just because you know the number of dominoes don't mean you're eating pizza, baby. Listen to me. Knowing one thing is one thing, but doing is another. And here he said, he that hears, but he doesn't do, he's like a man. Read the next statement. I'm in verse 49. He's like a man without what? A foundation. If I hear the word, but I don't apply the word of God to my life, I have no foundation. So what is Jesus saying the foundation is? He's saying the foundation is coming to him, hearing his word, and doing it. Now I've got foundation. Now, no matter what might happen, I'm not going to be moved. I've got a foundation. I didn't just go to church. I, I am the church. I'm living what I got. I'm living what I've received. Jesus is my starting point. I am building my life off of his word. So it's not, oh, well, I, I, you know, I'm building my life on Jesus. And I look at your life and I look nothing like Jesus. Well, that's what Jesus revealed to me. No, Jesus speaks through his word. Now, let me show you something in the Old Testament. If you would, turn back with me to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Now, you'll find 1 Kings right in front of 2 Kings. So if you will go over there. Y'all keep laughing at that. I won't have to come up with new material. All right, so 1 Kings, and I want to look at it in the seventh chapter. 1 Kings chapter 7. Foundation. What am I building from? I was laying in bed the other night, and I've been populating this list of all these foundational things that are in Scripture. And Lord willing, I'll share some of them or whichever ones the Lord gives me liberty to share. And the other night I'm laying in the bed and I was like, oh man, I've never seen it like this. I said, Christian, and I, our tithes, 10% of our increase, are the foundation for other 90. And I literally saw a visual, a visual of my tenth, our tenth being the foundation because that's applying the word to the other 90% of our income. And that man, no matter what happens, we financially can't be rocked because 90% of our finances are built on the 10% of what belongs to God. Now, if I kept 100 of it and did it my own way, then it's, it's no longer on a foundation. I, I, I've got to hope that I can make some right decisions and everything goes in my favor. But, but when, I'm, when, I'm, when, when my 90 is resting on that 10, that's foundational. Now, you might say, oh, that's Old Testament. See, there you go. 
we're not at the same starting point. I'm starting in Genesis. You're trying to start Matthew. Matthew's based on Genesis. You wouldn't have a New Testament if you didn't have an old one. I'm going to prove that to you in the Word of God, Lord willing, in this series. Now watch this in 1 Kings chapter 7. 1 Kings chapter 7. In other words, just start seeing your life foundationally. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 teaches that man is a spirit. He lives in a body and possesses a soul, a mind, a will, an intellect. That's where your emotion comes from. I get so emotional, babe. That's, that's, that's soul. Now, if I build my life off my emotion, if that's the foundation, I'm in and out of jobs. I can't keep a job. Why? Because as soon as somebody rubs me the wrong way, I go off. Because my emotion is the foundation of my life. When my emotion gets stroked the right way, I'm all in. But as soon as that emotion is reversed, I'm all out. Y'all are being hard on me today. Yeah, amen. See, that's why you can't make an emotional decision. Because emotional decisions are reversed by the reversing of the same emotion. Oh, she made me so happy. I want to live for her forever. Oh, she made me mad as Hades. You go. I can't let my emotions be the foundation of my life because they're temporal, subject to change. Watch this. I can't build my life off my flesh. Why? Because it's selfish. It's only motivated by self. It's where, it's, 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 it's where I'm tempted. It, it's, it's by which I am tempted. It's, it's deteriorating. My flesh is corruptible. When you dust your furniture in your living room and you wonder where all that dust is coming from, that's you. That's your body deteriorating that you're wiping off the coffee table. So where, if, I, if I'm looking at my life spiritually, mentally, physically, what needs to be the foundation of me? My spirit, my spirit. It was God that breathed into man's body the breath of life and he became alert and quickened and alive. What has communion with God? My spirit. I need to be spirit led in my decisions. Galatians chapter five tells me that if I'm led by my flesh, I'm gonna eat corruption. But if I'm led by my spirit, I'll bear fruit that glorifies glorifies God. I've got to allow my spirit to be the foundation of my life. If that be true, you wake up in the morning and you read scripture. Just like you would eat breakfast. Why? Because my spirit is my lifeblood. I can't just do things that profit my flesh while I abandon my spirit. I had someone tell me once not far from here that they couldn't come to this church anymore because they had moved away. But they were working right down the road. So when I brought that to their attention, they said, well, this is for money. You will drive for money, but you won't drive for the word. I'm not trying to be critical or judge anybody. I'm saying that if we're going to be foundational, we've got to invest in our spirit. We've got to invest in the things of God because that's your core. That's who you are. That's the place you got to build from. There are times your emotions will lie to you and you got to know the truth in your heart and in your spirit. There are times that your flesh is going to say, I'm too weak, I'm too tired, I can't do it. But your spirit has got to rise up and say, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. We've got to become foundational. In your own life, your spirit has to be foundational. In your home, we have to understand as men, we'll talk about this in this series, men, 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 listen to me. Our world is trying to strip men of their manhood. Why? Because God made man to be the foundation of marriage. And marriage is the foundation of the home. And the home is the foundation to society. So goes the home, so goes society. Well, that's not scripture. Oh, yes, it is. It's Psalms 127. Because Psalms 127 verse 1 says this. Except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes but in vain. 
What's that verse saying? It's saying that God keeps the city through the home. When you take a man out of the home, when you take fathers away from children, you are going to see a collapse of the home. And when the home begins to deteriorate, you are going to see a deterioration in society. Now, for single mothers that have been doing you say, Pastor, I beg the difference. No, you've been doing it because you got Jesus. That even when that man left you, your foundation was not that man. Your foundation was Jesus Christ. And therefore, you are an exception. Hey! There's a war going on trying to strip the role of the man in the home and with our children. And I got more scripture for you because in Malachi chapter 4, God spoke this word about his son, that he was sending his son. Malachi the prophet is prophesying. And he's saying, I am sending my son, the, 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 the messenger with, with, with beautiful feet and healing in his wings. And, and this is what he said. He said, he will restore the heart of the father to their children lest the earth be met with a curse. So what was God saying? He's saying when you have a disconnect between father and children, you have a curse. And we have a curse situation on our hands in this society because men have not be, be, been foundational in the upbringing of their children and in their marriage and in their home. Men, I'm just, I am a man. I put it on me too. Foundational. God didn't give the earth Eve. He gave the earth Adam, and then he gave Adam Eve. Everything was in place when the woman arrived. Hey! She became the apex of the creation. Apex means the grand finale, the crescendo, the, 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 the icing or the, or the, on the top of the cake. That's how she got a name, Adam. Look and say, I ain't seen nothing till I see her. Whoa, man. Woo. Adam was given the garden. Adam was given the work. Adam was told to dress the garden. Adam was told to keep the garden. Adam doing his work and keeping the garden and naming the animals. Notice that giraffe had a female giraffe. Noticing that bear had a female bear. Noticing everything had a mate except himself. He said, Lord, wait a minute. You've been holding out on me. I said, that's all right. I'll make you help. That's suitable to you. Before I had Chrissy, I, I, I adopted a little chocolate lab dog. Her name was Logan. She was my best friend. She was faithful. But that wasn't who God meant me to be with. <laughs> I was thankful not to come home to an empty house. I would sing her a song every time I fed her. I got sunshine on a cloudy day, and her mouth would start saliva because she knew when she heard that song, I was about to feed her. My girl, I got sunshine. She just go to tail wag. <laughs> See, dogs are different than cats. You feed a dog, that dog will think you're God. You feed a cat, that cat thinks it's God. <laughs> oh, what y'all doing at 1130, man? I tell you, y'all stay out of that Cracker Barrel in the morning. I don't want they give y'all a drink. Watch this. Let's get back at this. Foundational. Foundation. What's foundational? I'm telling you, when you start looking at society and peeling back all the layers, you say, oh, wait a minute. We don't have the same starting point. You're trying to get me to look at a man and size him up and come to a conclusion based on the color of his skin. Wait a minute. No, I, can't. I got to go back further than that. No, I'm going back further than that. You, you go, no, 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 I'm going back further. No, I'm going even further than that. Where were you going? I'm going back to the beginning. Well, God made man in his own image. In the image of, of, of God made he man. And God is so 
big that he could not make all man to look one way. And so that just like there is a diversity of dirt, God took man from the dirt and there's a diversity of pigmentation and color of our skin, but it has nothing to do with the who we are. It is just a house to our spirit. And you are not going to convince me to look at a man and size him up one way or another based on the color of his skin. James chapter 2 tells me that it is sin to have respect for persons. So I'm not going to come to a conclusion about a person because of the color of their skin. That would be sin. That starting point for you might be in recent years. My starting point is Genesis. Jesus was asked about marriage. And what did he do in Matthew 19? He said, in the beginning, God made male and female. I don't give a no court talk about it. Jesus. Jesus defines it because he created it. If we can't agree, it's because we don't have the same starting point. Yeah. All right, 1 Kings 7. Let's go there. Everybody there? Verse 10. 1 Kings 7, verse 10. And the foundation, and the foundation was of costly stones. Let's read that out loud together. And the foundation was of costly stones. The foundation of what? The foundation to the temple that they were building. The, 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 the Solomon's, this house that he built, the, 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 the foundation was costly. The foundation was costly. Go with me to Ezra chapter 3. Ezra, if you're in 1 Kings now, go to 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. Ezra's right behind there. Go with me to Ezra, and I'm almost done. Chapter 3. So we just read in 1 Kings 17 that the foundation was costly. Foundational stuff is expensive. Foundational stuff is going to cost you something. Foundational stuff has to be intentional. You have to value foundational things so that you cherish them, you protect them, you invest in them because it's foundational. In other words, if you, if you want a healthy marriage, you have to recognize, okay, number one, that, that marriage is built right on top of the foundation of Jesus, and for it to be healthy, it's going to be costly. I've got, I've got to invest in it. If I'm going to have family that brings God glory, then there's got to be an investment. That means when we get together at the dinner table, first of all, there's time at the dinner table. Yes, at the table. We gather together. We have dinner. No, you're not bringing your phones. This is time for investment. This is time when we talk about life and remind one another that we are siblings and that we are family. And, and, and we don't just have family alone. We bring in folk that might not have family because the word tells me that God places the solitude inside a family. And so we embrace others that might not have family into our family to teach our children to share and to teach them that life is not always about them. And so when you have that, oh my God, when you, when you, when you have that, when you have that, it's valuable. It's valuable because you know that's foundational stuff. That's not like just watching a game or going to a movie. No, this is foundational. This is where we're building a life from this place right here. That means before we even eat, we bow our heads in prayer and we thank God for for family and this food and our time of fellowship and his blessing in our life and we lift up Miss Johnson who's in the hospital and we lift up our cousin who's hurting right now and we teach our children to bear one another's burdens and remember when we give thanks that not everybody has it so well. It's intentional. It's not just going to happen. Especially as high paced as our life is. I was out this week. You know where I was at all week? I was with my family. And our oldest is now a senior. And I know I'm running out of time of that influence under our roof. Man, y'all get me emotional. Let me wrap this up. Ezra 3. When something's precious, you protect it. 
And we got to start making the foundation of our life something we protect. Mm -mm, you're not going to talk about. You're not going to. No, I'm protecting this time. Mm -mm, no, I'm not just going to let this go by. No, I'm protecting this time. It's foundational. Ezra chapter 3, we'll close right here, verse number 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, let's just read that part out loud. Ready? Read. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, we did not get to it yet. We did not get to it yet. But back in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, had I kept reading, had I kept on going, we would have seen right after he talked about the foundation, he said in verse 16 of 1 Corinthians 3, know ye not that you are the temple of God. That was in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, that we are the temple of God. And that came right in the context of the foundation of Jesus Christ. What's he saying? He's saying, and we're going to get into this later, that if you're to be a true temple of God, you've got to be built on the right foundation. And guess what? That foundation can't be cheap. A little talk with Jesus. Once a month. No, you've made no investment in your foundation. Glory to God. I want to show you something that's powerful in these verses, and we'll close. Verse 10, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. Watch this, verse 11. They sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good for his mercy endureth forever and all the pe toward Israel and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord read the rest because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Why do I praise God? Because Jesus is my foundation. No matter what I might be going through today or what I might be going through this year, Jesus is the rock of Gibraltar. He is my foundation. I will praise him no matter what looks like is being built in my life. He didn't lay Jesus as a foundation in my life for my life to have no fruit. No, he gave me this foundation and I know in time gold and silver and precious stones and great pillars and a great house is going to be built on this foundation I don't have to wait till I see the house to shout I can begin to shout right now because I've got the right foundation God cannot even begin to build your life spiritually speaking until you get the right foundation You're wanting marriage, you don't even have a foundation ready. You're wanting things that you're not ready to hold up. So much of a person's life, I'm, I, 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 I really am closing. But let's just pretend this is a regular book. So much of what we see in a person's life is just one chapter. And we don't even know what those earlier chapters included that led to the one we're viewing. And sometimes we look at the current chapter and we want that, but we're not digging deep enough to find the foundation that actually led to that. And that's what frustrates me as a man, as a husband, as a daddy, and most of all as a minister when I see people try to jump 15 chapters to be something you're not. Get your foundation settled. Get your foundation right. Build from there. You don't build a house from the roof down. There's stuff that nobody's going to see in your life right now, and you got to be okay with that. Because you're digging the footing. You're getting ready for the concrete. You're laying the foundation. Nobody's going to see. Matter of fact, I was here when they built this building. I was here almost every day. There are footings underneath this sanctuary right here, this worship center. There are footings on the, where these beams go up. 
massive. When I say they are massive, they are massive blocks of concrete. You didn't see them unless you were here when they were digging them out with track holes and filling them with cement because they would hold up this building. You can't see it, but it had to be a part of the process. And you got to know in your life right now, you, you may feel like, man, I don't feel like I can get anywhere. Dig that footing. Dig that footing. Get all that mess that got piled on top of Jesus. Get it out of the way until you are on the rock. Hey, hey, hey. I'm on the rock. Hey, I'm on the rock. I can build from here. Mm, glory to God. One o'clock. That's it. No. Let me pray for you this morning. Did that help anybody today? Yeah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. And I pray, Father, right now by your spirit that you would give each one of us a conviction to look at what we're building from. With every head bowed, all eyes closed, just for a minute. What's your starting point? Where are you building from? God gave you Jesus. And if you don't know him as Savior, today can be the day. Today can be the day that you say, Lord, I'm tired of building on the sand. I'm tired of building my life and stuff not working. And I get something going real good and it just falls Relationship after relationship, job after job, city after city. I can't seem to find my footing. Give your life to Jesus today. And I'm telling you that he's a master builder. And if you'll let him be the foundation of your life, not only will you have eternal life, he will show you how to live the abundant life and to give you friends that endure and relationships that endure and prosperity that endures and emotions that endure and stability mentally, physically, spiritually. Those things are available when you make Jesus the Lord our foundation of your life. I hear that. There is somebody here. There is, there is someone here. I, I, I've seen this too many times. Your, your foundation is your grandmother's faith. Your foundation is your parents' faith. And, and you, you're, you're still trying to honor your grandmother's God. But he's got to be your Lord. You can't build your life off your mother's faith. It's got to be your faith. It's got to be your decision. If you're uh, uh, old enough to know that you've sinned, if you're old enough to accept Jesus, it's got to be a personal, individual decision for you to make Jesus the Lord of your life and to build your prayer life and to build your word life and your praise life and to build your relationships and your future off of Jesus Christ himself. Do you know the Lord? Well, I've done some good. Okay. We've done some bad too. But what we read in 1 Corinthians 3 is when that on the day of judgment, it's not the gold or the silver or the precious stone that gets you into heaven. And it's not the wood and hay and stubble that keeps you out. It's whether or not you had a foundation called Jesus. So my life is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Is he the rock of your life right now? If everything got stripped away in this moment, would you have him? And maybe today that's you. Maybe you feel like everything's been stripped away. If that got you to Jesus, you thought that former house was great? Wait till you see this latter one.
I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge in my life I've built things that are represented by gold, silver, and precious stones and some wood, hay, and stubble. I ask right now that you would forgive me for the things I've built that didn't start with you. I make a decision today to make Jesus Christ and his word the foundation of my life, my starting point. And by your spirit, Would you empower me to build from that place? And by your spirit, keep me in remembrance of what I've heard today. I ask forgiveness of my sins. And I ask that you would cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I invite Jesus in my heart to be the foundation of my life. That I would come to you hear from you and honor what you've said. And I believe by faith that as I build from that foundation, I will see you glorified in my life. In Jesus' name, amen.